from my own personal experience, uh, I was brought up as well. I, I was brought up in the in the Merthyr Valley. Uh, although I had a little bit of Welsh as a small child, I'd lost that Welsh and relearned it when I was about 16 or 17 years of age. And this was in, I'm, I'm talking about 1966, 67, when Dawidi Wynn's work was becoming very, very popular and influential in, in, in Welsh cultural circles. And I was buying into that. I, Davide One's songs, I was playing them regularly on the on the uh, on the vinyls at home at the time, you know. Um, and it was a real inspiration to me to um to, to become part, well, to, to, to learn Welsh, to cross that bridge into Welsh language culture. Uh, it was it was a key element in 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 that uh, in inspiration. So from a personal point of view, I can say how how strongly that influenced me. Uh, in in uh, you know in the the power of popular song, if you like, in my own personal experience, uh, my my, my um, you know my my whole life would have been very very different if it hadn't been for um, Davidi one among other influences in that in that period, you know that sort of revival period, which which affected someone like myself. Um, what has happened, of course, is in 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 the past decade. The um, uh, round about the, the last decade, anyway, the the Welsh uh, national football team um, has has taken a very positive attitude towards teaching their players about Welsh history. Something that's been very very lacking in 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 Welsh cultural life generally, uh, or, or, or well, over the centuries really. Um, David Ewan himself has got a, a, a song about his, his school days, and you know he'd, he'd had lessons history, lessons geography, lessons English. Oh, he da go he da. I'm always getting these lessons in English about history and and, and and geography and so on and forth. And I get a couple of lessons in Welsh or fair play because I am a Welsh person, you know. Uh, and that was very much true of myself. I did history to uh, what, what, what was all level at the time. There, there was uh, you. You crammed a couple of Welsh history lessons in uh, at the last minute, almost. But uh, and and what I think one of the, the major turning points in the success of of Welsh football uh, in in uh, you know from the Euro the Euros of um, 2016 on really and up 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 to the World Cup uh, the, the, the up to the World uh, Cup is the fact that the the team itself you know they started by teaching them to be able to sing the welsh national anthem then they were taking them to places of significance in welsh history uh, taking them to Aberfan, taking them to see where here the wind was uh, was was killed in the first world war uh, and uh, the, the more you teach people about their history and and, and their roots and their culture the more again you build that identity and you build that pride in identity and and that i think is has been a key element in the in the success of the of, of the welsh uh, football team yeah. well i i find the whole area very fascinating uh, not, not so much on the literary quality of of the material although you know you can have very fine folk songs for example on, on the literary um, the literary merit but in approaching them from the social history point of view, where you can see the way that um, they're reflecting the tastes, the worldview uh, of, of, of peoples in different periods, and uh, what, what, what comes through regularly, both in a Welsh context and internationally, I think, is this power of, um, of, of popular song to, uh, from the point of view of social cohesion, for example, you know, bringing people together, and and also then um, the way it, it can enhance um, well identity, it, it builds and strengthens identity at a local level, uh, a, a, a cultural unit, and uh, and at, at a national level, and and that's that's what's uh, appealed to me especially, and that, that's why of course uh, Dawidi One is is a is a. a um, an example par excellence of that power of, 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 of popular song to build up national identity. Well, he really starts to emerge, that everyone starts to emerge in the 1960s. 
And the 1960s, the beginning of the 1960s was a particularly dark period in Welsh uh, cultural life, Welsh language cultural life and, and political life generally. This is the period where the, uh, I mean, the, the, uh, the emblematic, I suppose, example of, 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 um, of, of the, the inability really of, of Welsh public opinion even to carry any influence was the drowning of the Truerian Valley uh, near, near Bala. It was a, it was a small, uh, vi but vibrant uh, Welsh language community there and which was being drowned to provide uh, water for Liverpool. And although there were protests throughout the whole of Wales, uh, the whole of Welsh society, if you like, including uh, almost all, I believe, of the, the uh, um, uh, Welsh MPs were opposed to it. it, it carried on regardless. The other factor was that the, uh, the 1961 census showed that, uh, showed, emphasized the steep decline in the Welsh language which had, by, by 1961 had gone down to only a quarter of the population being able to speak Welsh. And, but what happens ironically then is during the 60s, you have this sort of revitalization of, of, of Welsh life. People, young, young people especially, um, being fired now to try and uh, reverse all this. And uh, you have the founding of the Welsh um, uh, Language Society, for example. And uh, David Ewan, as anyone who's uh, seen him recently, uh, performing, and as you know, he's a charismatic figure and an excellent communicator, and he becomes a leader in this uh, Welsh language society, a non-violent uh, protest movement, uh, but but willing to um, willing to break break the law. You know, one one of his uh, iconic songs is paint, uh, "Paint Your Bead and Wear It," painting the world green, and that has been in, was inspired by uh, taking down road signs or painting road signs in, uh, you know, painting out the English only road signs uh, with, with, with green paint. And uh, he and others were, were imprisoned for, for uh, you know, breaking the law basically in, in that period. But what you do see then is, uh, is that from the 60s on, you do see a, a revitalization of the Welsh language and Welsh culture gradually. Uh, you know, when I was a boy in, in the 50s and 60s, Welsh wasn't a legal language in Wales. By now, it's become a language, an official language of, of Wales. You know, something I wouldn't have dreamt would have been possible in the 1950s and 1960s. And David Ewan is, is a key, um, a key uh, figure in that transformation. David Ewan is very rooted in, in Welsh culture. And you know his songs are full of references to to Wales uh, and and to Welsh history and to Welsh geography. Um, he's also interestingly enough, uh, we think of Wales as the land of song, but you could actually perhaps more appropriately call Wales the land of poets, because for the past um, millennium and a half, really, I mean, Wales has always been an embattled nature has been fighting for our, you know, fighting for our existence over that period. And poet, poets in Wales have been very important spin doctors, if you like, for the Welsh community. Um, and they, 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 you know, Welsh poets, uh, of course, you, you have Welsh poets who are writing in a romantic vein, you know, a, a very personal vein, but there's this, this uh, community responsibility, if you like, on the part of poets to, to be the voice of the community. And uh, you know to speak for you know this hatch match and dispatch if you like you know um, you know birth and uh, all the significant aspects of, of of community life being celebrated by by poets and David when interestingly enough comes from a very important fam a prominent family of of Welsh poets uh, uh, Welsh community poets so he's really in that vein uh, of uh, of 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 the Welsh uh, poetic tradition which is very. Um, very committed to to Welsh cultural life and the promotion of Welsh of Welsh community life, but of course, when you're talking about the, the 1960s, especially when David Ewan starts to emerge, we are talking about uh, uh, um, an international uh, renewal, aren't we, culturally? You know, I mean, you, you think of the, the the growth of the pop music industry. You know, I mean, in in, in British context, you've got the Beatles and the Rolling Stones, etc. You've got an an international revival then of folk music, 
people like uh, Woody Guthrie, for example, and Pete Seeger in America. And uh, David Ewan is very much part of that. He's influenced strongly by people like uh, Guthrie. He's also then, of course, we're, we're in a period now where, yes, you've got protests in Wales, but you've got protests worldwide. Uh, 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 this sort of, you know, civil rights movement in America, for example, the anti-apartheid movement. Uh, and, and, and David Ewan is linking all uh, his songs sort of blend this uh, w very Welsh uh, background and, and context with an international context. Where, well, Welsh nationalism generally, um, th throughout the centuries really, has been a very, uh, it hasn't, it's not an introvert nationalism. It's not a nationalism that say we're better than other people, but we want to be part of an international community which promotes um, uh, social justice, etc. And David Ewan very much fits in very well in that. You know, he's got songs relating to um, to other minority cultures, uh, and as I say, to, to general social social justice worldwide. Yes, well, interestingly, the article I I, I wrote about him back almost well almost twenty years ago now, which is. Uh, is is available on the uh, you know the university library's uh, uh, website. Um, if I were writing it today, I'd have to or, or revising it today. I have to rewrite the last paragraph totally, because uh, what I'm saying in that last paragraph that that David one is someone of international significance, in the sense that he is a part of an international phenomenon. You know, you know the singer songwriter par excellence was a concrete example of the power and influence of popular song. That's how we finished the, the, the article. Um, but while emphasizing that David Ewan, um, in, that, in that last art, um, paragraph, I'm saying that uh, David Ewan has achieved the status of a folk hero in a Welsh context, that he's undoubtedly been someone who has um, helped change the course of Welsh history. Um, because w one thing that's true of David Ewan uh, and, and his, his whole um, um, policy, if you like, or, 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 or ideals, is although he, 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 his work is littered with references to, uh, to Welsh heroes of the past and, and significant uh, periods in Welsh history, uh, his desire is not to live in the past but to build on the past, to create a modern, vibrant Wales in an international context. Um, but of course, as I said in that last, um, last, last paragraph, however, I say David Ewan is not well known outside Wales and outside Welsh speaking Wales in particular, this is 20 years ago. Uh, I'd have to rewrite that by now, of course, because of the fact that the, uh, the Welsh football team has uh, adopted uh, a Mohi as its, uh, as its anthem here. And uh, it's, it's quite striking in, in the last verse of, uh, of Amorhid, um, David Ewan says there, um, uh, when in English translation, that, that let us shout out to all the nations, he says, that we'll be here until the day of judgment. We are still here. And ironically, of course, and you can see David Ewan himself, if you've seen him performing uh, recently, uh, Amorhid, you can see him pinching himself, can't you? And, and full of emotion because at last now, in a sense, uh, through becoming, uh, you know, being adopted as the anthem of the Welsh football team uh, at, at the World Cup, he, he has actually had the opportunity now of shouting out in front of all the nations, we're still here and, and telling people, people discovering for the first time that Wales exists, that we are a more here, that we are still here.